So, uh, guys, again, welcome to our monthly webinar. Uh, we're going to talk about getting ready for QMSR. This is definitely the big news in our industry. In 2022, FDA proposed this rule that they're gonna, they were planning to implement to amend the current quality system regulation to harmonize with ISO 13485, which is really the gold standard in our industry, practiced across the world, even for regulatory purposes. So they announced their intention to harmonize uh, with 13485 uh, to transition to what they call QMSR, which is Quality Management System Regulation. And that was done in 2022. It took them a while. They collected some comments. Now the latest news is that uh, their, their proposal has been approved by the White House. There's a department in the White House, OMB. I was not familiar with that. So it's the Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs. They review the impact of any proposed regulation changes uh, on the overall economy or some other impacts, and they have approved this proposed rule. So I believe this is pretty much a done deal, and it'll really be finalized and published as a final rule pretty soon. I still don't know the exact timeline on that, but it will be very quick, uh, certainly not months. They are running behind. They had announced that they will be publishing it in 2023, late 2023, but they are running behind. So uh, they are going to be doing it soon. It's coming. And as risk practitioners, I think we'll have a big role to play now in the quality management system because risk is no longer considered as something other, something different than a QMS. It is going to be well integrated within a QMS and we're going to focus on that. Okay, so guys, I have uh, only a few slides because today my focus is going to be really highlighting some of the risk-related requirements in 13485 that will now be sort of explicitly required as part of a FDA-compliant quality management system, right? QSR was sort of uh, loose, not loose, but sort of relaxed on risk even though FDA expected risk across the board but they required by regulation only in one place, and we're gonna look at where. Now, by looking at 13485 and including that as a reference into QMSR, it will go across the board. So the first step is to find out where 13485 asks risks to be explicitly required in the QMS. That will be the focus of our discussion today. All right, so the topic today is getting ready for QMSR, it is coming. And the first part of getting ready is to understand where risk will be explicitly required as part of a QMS, because now we are going to harmonize with 13485. So that's the focus of our conversation today. We're not go going to go into clause by clause detail of the differences between QSR and 13485. That'll be a topic for future conversations. Okay, so why QMSR and why now? I think that's an important question, right? Uh, why is it coming and why is FDA interested in moving towards that direction? So a couple of things are happening in our industry. We know that technology is advancing rapidly, right? AI, machine learning, software, it's everywhere. Interoperability, cybersecurity, we hear about all these big things. It's coming. Technology is going fast. And FDA is realizing that the regulatory framework has to keep up. Why? Because risk management, has to be now of focus throughout the QMS. You have to have a risk-based decision-making process to accelerate this kind of product development. Also, there is a near-perfect alignment. I say near-perfect alignment because there are always some detailed differences. Near-perfect alignment between QSR, the current QSR, and ISO 13485 2016 revision. But the biggest momentum, I think, is because of the success with the MDSAP program. Since 2012, it has been in play, and FDA has accepted the audit reports from ISO 13485 audits in lieu of FDA inspections. So they know that 13485 works, people are getting used to it, and there's near-perfect alignment. And finally, there's a need for global harmonization. FDA, I believe, has fallen behind in their regulatory framework for medical devices, so the timing is right. But look at this quote that they share in the proposed rule that was published in the Federal Register. I will be giving a lot of references to that publication 
Uh, if you have not seen it, please go download it from the Federal Register website and review it. The more flexible approach to quality based on risk management found within ISO 13485 will meet the needs of patients to have access to quality devices in consonance with the progress of science and technology. I think this is the fundamental driver. Technology is moving fast. People want safe and effective devices quickly to solve some of the most difficult problems that they face. And the QSR is not really equipped to do that. Why? Because the risk management is not an explicit focus. So keep that main idea in mind. So there's a more explicit focus on risk management. Here are some, some other quotes from that uh, proposed rule in the Federal Register. First, risk management for device manufacturers is the essential systematic practice of identifying, analyzing, evaluating, controlling, and monitoring risk throughout the product lifecycle to ensure that the devices they manufacture are safe and effective. Now, this is pretty much language from 14971. FDA is recognizing that it is important for safe and effective devices. Second, the current part 820 explicitly addresses risk management activities only in the risk analysis requirement within design validation in 82030G, whereas risk management is more broadly integrated in 13485. Now, if you read the preamble to the current QSR, you will see risk mentioned many places. And that is the expectation of the FDA that risk management will be practiced, but they can't really enforce it because it is not incorporated in the language of the regulation. With harmonization to 13485, that will change. The explicit integration of risk management throughout the clause, clauses of ISO 13485 more explicitly establishes a requirement for risk management to occur throughout the QMS and should help industry develop more effective total product lifecycle risk management systems. So this is the foundational idea. This is the philosophy. And they are really leaning on 13485 to boost their regulatory authority from a compliance point of view. Now, my impression has been that on the pre-market side, FDA has consistently emphasized risk management, right? They have requirements for documentation to be submitted as part of your regulatory package. But on the post-market side, their enforcement authority is sort of limited. And that is really what is happening here with this move. So in the rest of the slides, uh, really I'll focus on, at a high level, some key differences, at a very high level, some key differences between the two. Uh, a timeline, actually, let's look at the timeline of where FDA has been and where ISO 13485 has been to see the differences. And finally, we'll dig deeper into some of the more explicit risk-based requirements in 13485 that we will now be expected to implement as part of our QMSR compliance. So that will be the focus of our webinar today.